Okay. Ah. Uh, I have a feeling I'm going to get scalped for doing that Bitcoin video. We just like rushed that out and everybody's going, how dare you hate the Bitcoin? How dare you hate the Bitcoin? You don't understand the Bitcoin. It's, it's a utopian idea. You don't get it. And I'm like, ah. Like, you know. <laughs> you got that kind of feedback? Some people. Here are like the primary comments that are being put in that video. Either we're idiots, we don't understand the Bitcoin, or this is proof that the Bitcoin sucks, irreversible my ass, yada yada, so on and so forth. And like, you know, the exchange got hacked, not the Bitcoin system. Uh, you, you know, it, it's a. It's a good time to buy. Yeah. It, well, assuming you're comfortable buying with the exchanges that are still up right now and the volume that takes place on the exchanges that are up right a lot of them are up, most of them are up but the volume difference that takes place on those exchanges versus the other exchanges way low, you know uh, supposedly Trade Hill's back up but I, I, it, can you get Trade Hill to load right now because when I try and load Trade Hill it times out. My guess is they have too much traffic right now. I, I don't think they've like crashed. I just uh, Trade Hill. Uh, yeah. Still there. Okay. Like it was timing out earlier this evening. I haven't tried for a few hours. My guess is all the empty Gox traffic dumped in them, so they overloaded. Ah, uh, I we're, we're going to ignore this first one because I don't know if that's tied to the Bitcoinedness or not, and I, I don't want to be scrapping on that. Um, Bit, do you have anything to say on the Bitcoininess, or just move on? <laughs> We did a whole video on it, that's all I have to say. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, what do we think about the fact that Pandora, you know, they, they made their offering, everybody bought their stuff, and then almost immediately after all the Pandora shares sold, they did this. Yes, because <laughs> the investors are remembering uh, the dot-com uh, bubble and bust. And I was, uh, that's actually one of the software... Um, tools that I build for my W-2 job outside my own corporation is a, a stock analysis tool. It's very comprehensive. Um, you have to buy a subscription and it's very proprietary people that use it right now. But um, one of it was an immediate call when that went out was this is an absolute bubble in inflation and, uh, of uh, the price of the, of the stock and the, I just know my system did not flag it as, as one to go ahead and, and go with, and sure enough, it dropped. Oh, uh, see, I have mixed feelings about that because when you say something's a bubble, and you know everybody run for the hills, and then everybody runs for the hills, and it pops, and the price drops. I'm like, is that because it no, was a? No, we're trying to start it. It didn't form. It, luckily, it didn't form into it. I think that's that's what it was. I mean, at least at least all the strategy that was going on was well, let's be more cautious and hesitant and not do a repeat, right? There was an immediate bandwagon effect to boost that price. And of course, there are people that like to purport and then the media, of course, which helped out in the, in the year 2000 when we had the, uh, the bubble, of course, oh, look how well the stock is going and it creates consumer confidence. Yeah. And then more, more and more people, of course, this one, more people were cautious. They they backed off. So it was, well, no, it was and, the, and the news was covering Pandora and saying, you know, great, you saw it. But then, of course, the news stories that were covering the Pandora IPO also said, however, is this really something to invest in considering this company has yet to make a single penny? <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I'm like, uh, yeah, y'all don't have an opinion. None at all. <laughs> Uh, okay, I, I don't know. Uh, did I put this one in or did somebody add it? I don't remember adding this one. The one that... that one what, you added that? Oh yeah, I added that in. Uh, okay, w w what's the deal there? Well, it, it, uh, I forgot exactly the quote down here. Um, it's, it's, it's just updated the old 
law about, you know, the, um, you know, it's about pri- uh, privacy and stuff like that. Uh, uh, but it's like the, the, the line you've wrote here is police now require a search warrant to track your mobile phone whereabouts. Okay. Yeah. Um, technically, they were supposed to always have one to be able to do that, but I have a question to this. Does this supposed new restriction prevent them from buying your location? Because the end run around that has always been I go to AT&T, Verizon, Apple, whoever... And I say, I want to track so-and-so, but I don't have a warrant. Here's the money. Uh, and and it, it's, you know, they're not the ones stealing it. The company who's stealing it for them is stealing it. So it, it's, you know, they're just providing a feature that their system's capable of running. And I don't think that's exactly what the article says. Uh, I, I just skimmed through it quite a bit, and I kind of got the gist of it, you know. Okay. Uh, like, cause, uh, until you close that loophole, it doesn't matter if you say oh, they need a warrant, you know, it's like, okay, we won't track you, we'll have them track you. <laughs> okay. uh, the, the, the Facebook security, it's like, oh, you know, this is a good way to transition into Apple, actually. And, and this is in line, it was line with the, uh, yeah, we're going to go a little out of order here, because that one's perfect to just go right into Apple. Uh, it's like, Facebook secretly planning to bypass Apple on iPhones and iPads. I'm like, you know, I, this is no. What it is is basically, and there's a number of companies doing this. This isn't just Facebook. Um, as these mobile devices try and lock you, what you can do more and more, and try and take cuts of your pie and everything else. The official stance that the industry is taking is, screw you, I'll do it all through the browser. Uh, and, and that goes on kind of something to, that Bit has brought up many times, which is, originally, the whole idea of this device was, everything will go through Safari, and, uh, or, or, you know, in the case of other devices, other browsers, but the idea was it would all just go through the cloud. Now, I'm sure the way Apple envisioned that was ultimately it would only go to a web page Apple controls and you'd have to submit it to Apple's web interface to get the application in there and so on and so forth and it would only be applications they devised and created. I'm sure that's what they initially envisioned. Uh, there's yeah, no way in, now that people are going to bypass by just going to the web. You know? Yeah, there's no way to go through it now. But it, it comes into something like... Why you, can't they just let them in, you know? Well, no, but it no, but it comes into something Bit complains about, and I complain about this too because I'm a I'm a web designer, uh, and that is on these mobile devices the browser is really underpowered. It, it's it not. Really is. Yeah, it's and not. It has nothing to do with Flash. You can't run uh, like uh, there are I, for at least my business. There are still applets running out there. There's still Java based like Java FX that's mm-hmm. still running out there. There's lots of plugins that would argue, there are programmers that would argue that of the open standard school. Like, well, we can do all of it in HTML5 and blah, 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 blah. Let's, let's get away with that. But I always counter arguments that there's a place for both of them. And quite frankly, if it's a resources battle, uh, they're, they're going to be quite shocked to see once they start using the Canvas tool on HTML5 and they can't pass as much off to the video card uh, or uh, hardware acceleration as, as much as they want to see how much resources then gets Well, no, and, yeah. and on the iOS devices, it's a joke. I'm, I'm sorry. It, it's, yeah. it just doesn't work at all. I, I, and I have no idea why that is, but it's like, uh, I, I'm wondering if that, it, it, especially with more and more stuff like this going on, if that isn't on purpose. Because really, on an iOS device, if you want to have a good end user experience, you kind of have to make a native app. Yeah. See, but they'll argue. See, they'll argue. I run into people that'll argue and say that the simplicity is the user experience by giving you less options, and so and, and as long as it's as for for example, if what you're doing on the device is problem free, even though you have no options, that's a great user experience. Yeah, but see, for something like just cool, let people into the API, say like the whole um, Amazon Amazon thing, you know, like just. Their books through a native, um, 
the, to, right through the native app instead of going redirecting to the browser. Well, but that, just that, let them in because they but, know they're just going to go use the browser anyway. Just but what that's but what that's coming down to is Apple wants their thirty percent cut of every sale Amazon does. Well, they ain't gonna get it. Well, I I know, but see that, that's the thing. It really at the at the, the at the end of by by um by limiting that. You know? Well, no, at the end of the day, now this is this is really a marketplace battle, and that if the if the costs to do business the best user experience way costs more than your profit margins, you're going to say, screw the best user experience. We're going to go for the worst user experience. Well, maybe they could uh, find some middle ground or something like that. Uh, uh, but but the uh, marketplace, the inner marketplace right inside the I ecosystem, you know, no, 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 you're, 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 you're call me, call me. You are allowed to do easy. that so long as you give Apple their 30% cut. It's the 30% cut. It, no, they they just want thirty percent of every sale, and you can't everything, and you can't raise your prices to absorb the extra cost. It's against the terms of service to raise your prices to absorb the extra cost. Well, uh, if we're gonna get what I find ironic is the whole iCloud thing, and which has spurred a debate, which I think is so sidetracked. Uh, like uh, John Gruber, who's a who's an Apple pundit is talking about some other articles where people are trying to compare web and what is not web and web apps and all this other stuff. And I think that's all really where Gruber gets at the argument of saying, well, Apple is presenting a cleaner user experience because they're picking Coco, the native, Apps using a web service to get online to, to bring you uh, cloud services, whereas something like Google is doing, if not more work, to present a better user experience through a browser. But the thing of it is, is that I don't look at it that way at all because to me that's marginal whether you wanted to do something within a browser. And I would say, like to Gruber's point, is that he's missing the point in that while there is a tremendous amount of work to try to make a portal within inside the browser, to try to make something like an application that runs in a browser that would probably give you as a smooth of an experience as an application. The point of it is, the point of what Google is doing is about where the data is. It's all about the data. And part of the code where Gruber makes a point in saying, well, view source code and you're gonna see all the code that runs in the client. Well, it doesn't get to the client until the server pushes it to it. That's part of the data, okay? And Apple's making it very clear, and I like their model versus Google and saying, the data is yours. We want to run as much stuff locally as we can and rely less on the cloud as much as we can. Because obviously when Gmail went down, everybody freaked out, right? It's a single point of failure. And I'm always saying, well, okay, fine. If Amazon wants to run within a browser and they want to try to control their, their content or whatever or, or, or outside of this native application model to try to save 30%, fine. But that's data, can, you know, it's, it, it comes down to uh, who's gonna Who's gonna really own the, Who's gonna really own the data in the end? Whether it, the data is code, whether the data is our own content, it's like that's why I don't I don't even work. Uh, I don't use Google services because I don't believe in a central authority owning all of my data, whether it's code that comes down to my client or my personal photos, documents, whatever. I prefer the Apple model where it pushes everything down to me and it stays temporary in the cloud. And my you know and my each respective client device. Is the peer is the peer device that maintains authority over my data? I mean, what happens if, uh, like, what G, what you were talking about, back your stuff up, back your stuff up? Well, many people uh, that lost a lot of their things in uh, Gmail, you know, that's it. Their server shuts down. But if you have a peer device that has your same data on it, boom. Okay, fine. You can, there's other ways you can go sneaker net or Bluetooth, or again, whatever you want to do to get the data. They just they just assume that everything's going to be there forever. Will be. Well, and, and even in the hybrid model, if it, it doesn't matter if the data is living purely on the cloud or if it's dependent on a cloud node to make it work, if you're not properly backing up, it's the same end result. When the cloud node goes out, the whole thing's broke. You're, you're well, wait a minute. If I have a device based upon Apple's model, which is the, the, let's say I'm working on a document. It's local right now. 
Now, if my local instrument fails, of course, then the whole purpose of maybe an online backup of using iCloud services has failed in that purpose. But if iCloud fails and I'm running a document, okay, my document's here. It's it's not a, it's not Google Docs. Where oh, okay, but, it, but, but, I, but I've just lost it. I can push this same document if iCloud's down. Of course, I'm a savvy user, a power user, so I know the methods to push it to other devices. Well, no, but, and, and, okay. and bit you can do the exact same thing with Google Docs in conjunction with Libre or Open Office. There's a plugin for Libre and Open Office. Okay, with, that are, but is it, is it, all right, but. How many users are, are doing this, to be honest? Uh, be honest. It, it, honestly, given the limited nature of the Google Docs, most people I know who depend heavily on Google Docs, they're opening and managing it through Libre or OpenOffice, which means they have this local word processing client or spreadsheet or whatever that gives them the full application control of the thing, uh, and that also has the local Libre or OpenOffice backed up version because it's constantly backing up too. Is just part of how well, that, that application works. I want to ask you, that's a Linux user because I know a lot of people in the corporate world that use Google Docs and they just leave it up there. They're okay. not. They're okay. all Microsoft Word people or WordPerfect people, and I know tons of them that I work with in meetings and this and that. Uh, no, no. Okay, J just because it's in the cloud doesn't mean that the one copy, one copy only is a bad rule. Okay, <laughs> like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't like central computing. I don't. We, we, go, go ahead. Well, now, uh, you say that again, call me. No, I'm, saying, I'm just saying cloud disappear and they come back, you know. Yeah, well, no, and, 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 and like, a, 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 Apple's model is, in some ways, like you're, you're giving an example where it works that way, but on the other hand, it works the exact opposite with the pictures. You know, like after Y pictures, it starts deleting them from your local device and backing them up to right, the cloud. Right, because the model is designed to say we're pushing it to the other devices. It's meant to be a peer-to-peer -peer network with a, with a central backup. Google is meant to be the central third authority, like a token ring, like the old token ring main mainframes, where if I have a dumb terminal and the mainframe goes out, I'm, I, I, that's it. My, my line of computing is over. And I think where, like John Gruber was misunderstanding a lot of the people that he was trying to say, well, it's, it's user f interface. You know, when people are talking about Google runs all on the web, what they're talking about is that even the source code, everything is delivered via the central server to the client, no matter what, whether it's content, code, the creation, everything. Once that goes out, that's it. End of service. There's, there's, there's nothing else. I, I don't like that model. I've been burned several times. I used to fight for that model. See, back when... Nobody really remembers application service providers. Oh, I know what you're talking about. You know, it, it, what I would say, it, 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 at the end of the day, when Gmail went out, but Google had backups. So, Gmail was... Okay, well, that, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Google is, is a pretty big powerhouse where you can say, okay, it's kind of like, I trust my money with the bank. That does, they're big enough to say, I, I trust it, right? But for me, I always have the damnedest luck in saying... It would be me if there's a time-sensitive meeting and I got a presentation. That yes. Google would put yes. me right there for that presentation. Yes. I, I know. I know what. Up. I know exactly what you're talking about. And again, this is why I back up my Gmail. I back up my Google. Doc. I back all this stuff up because I'm with you. Like I know that one time I need it. It's <laughs> <laughs> not be there. That's it's when Saad will say, "You remember Murphy, that optimist? Let me yeah. show you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, that's exactly what happens there. But but no, I've just, I've just been burned. I, I, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a new kid on the block. You know, I've, a lot of these things that we see and that we're excited about are really, again, reused ideas. Well, no, it, it's like, and, and, and this they is, deal with in the night. Well, no, and it's one of the reasons that I like, even though Google built their thing the way you're talking about, mm -hmm. that they built it in such a way that it is very easy for things like LibreOffice, Thunderbird, and so on to go in and without any hard work at all, basically you just plug it in and it pulls everything out. Right. And now, yeah, I have a Gmail account, but guess what? My Gmail account downloads to each of my clients. Yes. It's like, and, and I, I have copy. So if Gmail dies, I already have my Gmail Yeah, you have everything copy here. Yeah, it's like I, basically I check my Gmail 
uh, every so often with Thunderbird, and I have a local copy of everything here, and it's like, yes, it's just a good idea. So I like the hybrid model. How do you get to the hybrid model, whether you do it Apple's approach, where everything starts here and then it winds up up there, or you do it Google's approach, where everything starts up there, but if you want to access it via a local application, which makes a copy of everything in the process, well, that's good, okay, too. Okay, so wait a minute. I, I'm not going to agree with that analogy because... Apple is, it pushes it up there, it's a temporary storage until all devices essentially, or they feel, and I actually thought Apple was going to go ahead and build that, that intelligence into the user ID. Like if you have an iPhone, an iPad, several Macs, or whatever, it, it then creates a marker for your iCloud service and saying, okay, I have a Google, or a Google, I have a Pages doc that has now been pushed up to the cloud. It stays up there until each marker has been fired off because that means the push has occurred for each of my devices and therefore the need for it, unless I've specified that I want it backed up there, it can, if I specify backup, it stays. If I have not, then I, it can remove itself. I, I, I can see that being a problem for a couple of reasons and I think I know why Apple didn't go that route. Uh, every so often, even though Apple doesn't like to talk about it, the only way to fix an iOS device is to nuke it. And uh, oh, you, uh, restart it, but I mean that doesn't mean you lose the content. Uh, I mean, no, I, I'm, I mean, talking, I, 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 I'm talking device. about having to do a factory ISO restore, where you basically wipe the device and restore, oh. and then you have to oh, re-download yeah. everything. Sure. Uh, I like, mean that that not they, but they did specify specific backup services. Obviously, the versioning, backing up your iPhone. Uh, sending up things purposely in the cloud for backup purposes. That's 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 a defined service of saying I want to use it. Yeah, well, no, and, and and I think they're I'm going about I, I, and pushing and using like application service provider applications. Google does own the rights to Google Docs application. Yes, yes. you can tap into it from some local clients, but that's the same model as an application service provider. Well, they no. are sharing the the weight and price of an application across many vendors because they held the license and you would just use your temporary service to, to, to go in to a central authority. Now, yeah, you just said that there's local clients and I'd say most of those are, are, are Linux users are going to they use the local clients to tap into Google Docs. Now, email is a different story. Email is inherently a central authority. It's, it exists <laughs> and emanates within the web. Essentially, it's not something that we can start like a photo that has can go up and then get pushed for a, for a syncing service. I know that Apple's trying to fix the mobile me syncing philosophy that they had, and that they use. I know they didn't want to use Gruber went into this syncing is a bad idea type thing, but or, or he didn't say. I mean, he said that Apple was making it taboo, and in, in that they didn't want to use the same vocabulary that existed in mobile me to try to give the same taste to people that iCloud would do the same thing. Although syncing is essentially what they're doing, but they're doing it differently because I could tell you what, what Gruber is talking about, I'm a mobile me customer. And yes, it would say when a merged account, there's conflicts when it's peer-to-peer, -peer, like, well, which computer is working? If I have contact information here, and I'm adding a phone number here, but I have a phone number here, okay, what? What is the right way to handle it? And mobile me would ask you, right? Whereas if you go to iCloud, this computer, like here, my left, would send it up. That means what the cloud has now is is the true authority. That means before I try to add the phone number right here, it's going to push it and already say this number's come down. Therefore, the cop can exist because it's been pushed here, and then whatever I add here, then goes back up to the cloud and it becomes the truth again. So it's not this syncing where we have peer-peer relationships. And well, and, like and, and, and not to put too fine a point on that, but what you're talking about there is actually something Google's been doing for years, and it freaks some people yeah, out. And Google does it easily. Why? Because they're the central server. Yeah. They are the, now, I used to, like I said, I used to fight for that central model until I got burned. Well, okay, but see, I, 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 I would argue that, it, 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 I know you get burned, but I'll give you an example. Um, I update contact information for somebody. It pushes through to my Gmail, it pushes through to all my Android devices, and then I have that local on the device, even if it's not online. I still have all that, it just, it just 
if, because it, even though you don't like it because of the central thing, the advantage of the central thing, if it then filters down and pushes to everything, is that once it's pushed down, the central authority then becomes a secondary backup and all your actual used copies, uh, as long as they're linked to the central authority, they're all in sync. But if the central authority goes away, you still have it on all your pushed to little copies everywhere. Well, yeah, when I had my Android devices, yeah, I, it was the, the local device, well, that's if I moved it to that folder. I didn't have, I, I mean, I remember when... Uh, well, and, that, and that's one of the reasons they changed in the in the in the recent versions of Android that you can change where your apps are. You know, you can just have them be on the SD card or the local or whatever. I mean, yeah, if you yes, wanted when to, I the SD card, that's right. you could just remember, take. Remember, I had a problem when it wouldn't. It wouldn't. Uh, the, but but the thing of it is, okay. See, I know you like the Google model, and I'm going to assume that's primarily because it's Linux friendly and, and it does use a more of an open model. I like the, I like the, I like... Wait, 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 my thought here. Okay. But my argument to that would be what I find contradictory to the open and Linux model is that who owns the damn data at that point? I want my data to be mine. A central authority to me feels like I'm renting. What is when it comes to actual laws and authority, when it comes down to data, it better ban, damn be my, my data. But I know how the United States treats this, that well, it resides on this other server, and it, therefore it, it, it has a different procedure for handling that data. But when that data is inside my home, now that, that requires a different procedure to come in here. Well, a, a bit, bit. I'm a little weird on that. I, 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 okay, I, I know what you're getting at there from the privacy concern. Um, if, okay, if something is truly sensitive, it doesn't touch my cloud-based things. It's not in my Google Docs. It's not going through my... It, it, it is not sent that way. Uh, because it's something that needs not to be there. Now, I realize most people don't take that uh, sent. But, you know, I, I would treat this like... Uh, the, you know, a good rule of thumb for what it's okay to put us on. If I'm in an office where I'm in a cubicle and all four of us have our backs to each other, but we know at any particular time anyone else in our little four person cubicle could turn around and go, hey, yada, yada, and see everything I'm messing with, you know, there are certain things you just don't bring up in that environment. And that is the rule of thumb you should use in any of this stuff okay, that then, you're. Okay, then how is that efficient computing? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't want to add another task that I have to worry about and say, wow, I want to see, because to me, that's why a lot of me loves to be an Apple user, because you do just want to have something and not have to be a damn computer administrator for yet another thing. I mean, that's one thing that a lot of Apple users would say, is like, we don't need to be computer administrators like where the, the Windows user would say, Jesus, you don't know how to do this? What's wrong with you? Uh, I mean, there's, there's, they're, they're both valid arguments, because uh, I always like to know the... Well, uh, then not, not, to but, put, not to put too fine a point on that bit, but at the end of the day, uh, if you're... Uh, the, if, in both ways, you're just... With both models, uh, you're kind of just blindly trusting that... Of course there's going to be some trust. It, there's, there, uh, well, look, to do anything in life, we have to have some sort of trust. But what it, it, it's just, it, but then it comes to a margin of how much at that point.